Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So to continue my Oath of the Gatewatch and Shadows over Innistrad uh, coverage, we're going to be uh, starting the Oath of the Gatewatch campaign today. There will be a new deck tech out tomorrow once I've had an opportunity to play around with some of the new cards, but we're going to start off with the Oath of the Gatewatch campaign as it kind of leads on from Battle for Zendikar. So retake the world. Zendikar struggles under the siege by the Eldrazi. Three planeswalkers, Gideon, Jace and Nyssa, join forces to defend the plane and its people. Through Gideon's leadership, Jace his knowledge of Hadrons and Nissa's powerful elemental magic, the three challenge the Eldrazi, Titan Ulamog, in the city of Seagate. Okay, so we've got the first duel to start off with, so complete the story to unlock the new starter box cards for your collection. You can also unlock these cards with any Oath of the Gatewatch booster pack purchase, so let's take this on. So where we left off, uh, I think we managed to beat back some of the Eldrazi, but uh, we've got some more to take on today. It's gone black. Okay, here we go. So the Planeswalker Gideon, Jace, and Nyssa have trapped the Eldrazi Titan Ulamog using a field of Hedrons, but the trap breaks open unexpectedly and, sec and a second Titan, the Ko Kozilek, bursts forth from beneath the earth. As the Eldrazi Titans and their spawn pour into the city of Seagate, Nyssa and her comrades rush to its defence. Okay, so we've got to take on um, Kozilek now, the Butcher of Truth. So it looks like we're playing as uh, Nyssa. So what we've got here then... Um... We get a better hand here. Sylvan Advocate. Yeah, I, th I think I prefer this hand. Mostly because we've got uh, the Grazing Glade Heart and a Rampant Growth. So, yeah, we can gain some nice life here. We've got Auron Reef Hydra. Yeah, it'd be nice if we had Rampant Growth in the actual game itself. Um, so, it's basically two mana ramp card. Okay, so sorry, I'm uh, thinking I'm playing a multiplayer game here. I do like the new backgrounds as well. So this is the Oath of the Gatewatch one. There's also another one for, so I think we'll start off with a Sylvan Advocate. As long as you control six or more lands, Sylvan Advocate and land creatures you control game plus two plus two. It's pretty cool. So new cards get cast over here now. Some of the uh, kind of where things are being cast to have like moved around and stuff. So we'll start to see that uh, fairly soon. So I think we'll go for Grazing Glade Heart next turn and then maybe Rampant Growth the turn after that. So the Eldrazi Brood have played nothing yet. So, yeah, we'll drop Glazing Glade, Grazing Glade Heart on our off step. No, not on our off step, on our second main phase, sorry. What am I on about? Push through two damage with the Sylvan Advocate. Take the Eldrazi Brood down to 18. We we'll just play out Grazing Glade Heart. It's really weird them going over there. I think it's just to make it a bit more clearer where things are being cast to. So, what we've got here then Reality Hemorrhage. Reality Hemorrhage deals two damage to target creature or player. So, goodbye, Grazing Glade Heart there, unfortunately. Not the end of the world. We will we'll just be playing Rampant Growth next turn. Okay, we've got uh, Aldrazi Aggressor. So it's a has haste as long as you control another colourless creature. Okay, so luckily that doesn't mean he doesn't have haste as he doesn't have another colourless creature. Okay, what well we've got here then? Management Ma Managor Managorja Hydra. So it's a 1 1 with trample. Whenever a player casts a spell, put a 1 1 counter. Oh, okay, so we probably want to play. We can play. Can't play both of these this turn, unfortunately. So we won't be swinging with Sylvan Advocate. So we just skip attack there. And then just play out this. Then we'll probably ramp up next turn with the Rampant Growth. Just so we can start pumping this up. So yeah, we can really do getting that fourth mana down so we can get the Rumbling Baloth down. Okay, so we'll play out Forest, also play out Rampant Growth, so we can potentially play Embodiment of Light next turn. Land creatures you control have Vigilance, and whenever a land in battlefield under your control, you may tar have target land you control become a 3-3 elemental creature with haste until end of turn. Awesome. That's going to get pumped up. And we're just going to choose a mana to put into play. There we go. Uh, we won't attack this turn because there's no point. This one get killed and uh, and this one will get blocked. So this one, there's no point swinging with both of them. This one will get killed. This one will get blocked. So we've got Vestige of Emrakul. So it's devoid of trample. So okay, whenever a spell gets cast. Oh wow! So this is part of. Uh, is this become part of the set? Because it's got a um, a set thing on it. I've never seen this one before though. Unless it's been added in. I don't know. It's interesting. So this is part of the um, the origin set, which is interesting. Never seen it before. Uh, okay, so I think we'll play Embodiment of Light here. So that goes up to a 4-4. Four, four. There we go. So we've got a nice 4-4 four, four with... Uh, do I attack? No, I don't think I attack. I, I might attack. I might have attacked if I had these two down. But there's no point attacking with... Um, so if he plays a spell, that gets pumped, which is awesome. I don't, I don't think he's going to swing. No, he's not. He's going to play another Vestige of Emrakul, which is going to pump up our Mana Gorger. 
Thank you very much for that. Okay, we found another ramp of growth, so I think we'll play you out now. So that gets pumped. Gets ourselves another mana. So choose a creature you control to become a 3 3 elemental. Why the hell not you? Okay, so that's got a five, that's five five. So uh, yeah, we're just going to we're just going to go mad here and just swing with all of these, just because we've got a very good board now. So uh, you might decide to double block a few things. So, but we're going to push through a lot of damage anyway. So there we go. So this one's not going to get any bigger now, but we are going to basically wipe out a lot of his board. So yeah, our mana gorge Hydra did a lot of a uh, lot of good work there. So he's going to play out another vestige of Emrakul. So we've got a good board state right now, so we can swing with both of these creatures again, I think. I feel. We've got here Nissa's Judgment, support 2. Put a 1 1 counter on each of the two target creatures. Choose up, choose up to one target creature and opponent controls. Each creature you control with plus 1 plus 1 counter on it deals damage equal to its power to that creature. Awesome. So I think I want to play this one. So put plus 1 plus 1 counter. So choose a creature. Each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it will deal damage equal to power to that creature. So that one. So these both get pumped, and that, and that one gets destroyed. So yeah, I'll take that. These both have Vigilance as well, so... It's not a bad deck, really, Nissa's deck here. Uh, it started out a bit... First hand was a bit naff, but it's uh, improved ever since, so... What we got here, then? Cryptic Cruiser. Not the best card from the Eldrazi there. I think he's basically dead now, because he just he's played that out, but uh, he can't actually block our second attack, so... It's pretty cool. So he's going to swing for lethal here. Here we go. So he can only block uh, five damage, and he's got five damage coming his way from the second creature. So very nice. Let's see Eldrazi Brood defeated. Cool. So up to fourteen hundred gold for Oath of the Gatewatch at the moment. So the Planeswalker fends off the initial wave, but the assault is relentless. Hundreds of Eldrazi descend as the Titan Kozilek smashes through the Seagate's walls. The Planeswalkers have no choice but to retreat as the city crumbles and the tide of Eldrazi envelops the former Zendikari stronghold. Okay. So we're on to uh, mission number two. So complete the story to unlock... Oh, yep. So but there's no point reading that. It's just saying about how it's unlocking gold. So the failing of the Hedron Trap was no accident. Hiding beneath the Seagate, the demon Obnixilis siphoned away the power of the Hedrons to reignite his Planeswalker Spark. After eons, he is finally free of his imprisonment, but he is not free of his rage. He seeks revenge against the, na the, uh, the nature mage who nearly spoiled his plans. It's time for the tables to turn. So it's, you are Obnixilis. Freed from your imprisonment, now is the time to take your revenge on Nissa Ravain. Okay, interesting. So we're actually playing Obnixilis in this... Um, in this matchup, was not expecting that. Okay, so what we've got to start off with. We've got Typhoid Rats, Bone Splinters, and Cruel e Edict. Yeah, I think it's not not too bad. Not too bad an opening hand. So we've got a one one with Death Touch. We've got potentially two ways of destroying creatures. So hopefully we're drawing something a bit better. It's off with a decent amount of mana as well, so I'm not going to complain really. Okay, so he's got a Scythe Leopard, so it's a 1-1 one, one with Landfall. So maybe we want to Cruel Edict that straight away, depending on what we draw this turn. What do we missed to find? We missed to find Corrupt. So it deals damage equal to the number of Swamps you control, so that's a big sweeper. So yeah, I think we'll get rid of the Scythe Leopard, as it could be potentially quite troublesome. It is a Landfall creature, so... I'm being greedy here. Basically, we're playing the AI, so I don't really mind too much. Yeah, if I was playing a human opponent, I don't think I would have been quite so uh, greedy with that, but... Okay, we've got uh, Nissa's Chosen. Uh, if it would die, put it at the bottom of its owner's library instead. Okay, so that one we might want to hold back on the Typhoid Rats now and leave it as a blocker. Okay, more mana, so... Uh, maybe we just swing, actually, just because uh, he can't block it, because otherwise his Nissa's Chosen dies. Be interesting to see what the AI does. So we're going to push through another point of damage. I'm hoping we're going to draw in something decent here at some point. I mean, do, I mean we do have Bone Splinters to take it on, but... Uh, we've also got Corrupt, potentially, in like three turns time to... Uh, okay, we've got Grazing Gladeheart here. So he's going to land forward and give him health. Which is not particularly nice, so we might want to get rid of that one with the Bone Splinters. So we're going to take two damage from the Nissa's Chosen.
That's what we found on turn four. We've got Slither of Skulls. So it's an Eldrazi with Devoid. Whenever another non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 colourless Eldrazi Sound Creature token. Very nice. So we're going to be playing you out. And then that's going to allow us to potentially... We'll skip attack now because we can then block with the Typhoid Rats, kill that, and then potentially put a, a Scion Creature token down on the battlefield as well. So... So he did gain two life there from the Grazing Glade Heart. And the Marassa Ranger is now coming down. Okay, so Corrupt, I thought it was a sweeper. It's not. It's just he, he basically deals six damage minimum to either a single creature or player. And then you gain like six health. So now do I Bone Splinters, Grazing Glade Heart? Um... So yeah, Colourless Mana now has its own like little little symbol, which is interesting. So it could destroy Grazing Glade Heart, or it could destroy Marassa Ranger. Hmm, interesting choice. I'm not sure really. Maybe just block for now. And we do have the corrupt potentially next turn to destroy that one if it does pump start to pump itself up. We've got a way of getting a lot of life left from the corrupt, so I'm not too bothered there. Okay, so yeah, he did decide to uh, pump himself up that way. So we probably want to destroy that Morass Ranger this turn. Ooh, we've got Murder as well. That's very useful. So we're going to Corrupt you. Very nice. And then do I swing with both of these? Yeah, I think I do because this one can only be destroyed by one of them. So he's going to double block. So we probably want to kill the Grazing Glade Heart uh, first as a priority. And then we can always kill this one later on with either a Murder or a Bone Splinters. So we can do with a big creature. I don't know what's in this deck, so we're basically just waiting to draw in something good here. Let's take two damage, which is not the end of the world, as we've got quite a nice... Uh... Okay, we've got a Nissa's Chosen as well. Hopefully we've drawn something good here would be nice. Maybe a sweeper, Boardland Ranger into the battlefield. You may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it. If you do, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Okay, or the usual Spieliul. Okay, what do we get? We got Harvester of Souls, Death Touch. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may draw a card. Very nice, so we're going to be playing you out. Is that just another non-token creature dies? Awesome. So we'll, we'll skip attack there, I think, then. This does have Death Touch, so we can just block a single creature and it'll die regardless of how big it is. So he's decided not to swing for obvious reasons. So we'll be able to draw an additional card this turn. We've got another Typhoid Rats, which is good. Play you out. We'll also then murder one of these, I think. Maybe one of the Nissa's Chosen, so we can draw an additional card. So, oh, it didn't actually die, did it? Because it goes to the bottom of his library. whoops a daisy I forgot about that. Uh, so we're then going to Bone Splinters you instead then. So that'll be fine. Yes, I would like to draw a card, please. We just get an additional mana. Yeah, I, I, I completely like forgot that... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh yeah, because we draw two cards. Ooh, we've actually made a funny Blood Gift Demon as well. Um, excellent. I do like this card. It used to be... Um, so we're actually going to swing here because of the fact that... Uh, He's only got a 2-3 on the board now, so he's not going to uh, block. Yeah, Blood Gift Demon was always awesome. I think this was in last year's version. Did used to like Blood Gift Demon. It was a pretty pretty sweet card, pretty sweet demon card, so that's nice to see. So that's going to go away. Okay, we've got Black Cat as well. So you've seen like, loads of cards from uh, my Magic Past from like previous versions. So that's a 5-4 with Flyer as well. And then basically we can then force our opponent to lose one life. And uh, target player draws a card and loses one life. Oh right, so we can either do it to him or to us. So you can use it to like draw cards and lose a life. Which we can really quite afford to do right now. Don't know why I played out there. But uh, so when Black Cat dies, target opponent discards a card at random. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, we've got a really good ball state now. It took us a little while to get there, but uh, Territorial Balf with Landfall gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Is he going to swing? I doubt it somehow. We've got a very good ball state here. So it's going to go to a 6-6, six, six, but it's on his off step, so who cares? 
So we're gonna we're gonna draw a card with our blood gift demon. We're gonna find. We've got a smothering abomination. Bit of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. And we've also got a carrier thrall. Very nice. I probably wanna play out both of these on my end step. So we're gonna swing with everybody. Why not? We might just win here, depending on what he decides to block. Okay, so yeah, he's decided to block. Um, so choose an opponent, discard a card. Will be you. Yes, I would like to draw a card, please. And we get an additional mana, so we can definitely play out Smothering Abomination and Carrier Thrall. There we go. Yeah, we've, we've basically won now. I, I hardly doubt this, this deck has a has a sweeper. So what we've got here, Giant Spider with Reach. Yeah, I've got four damage to push through and I've got way, way too many options in how to do it, so... We've got three creatures which can push through the lethal damage and only one and only two creatures that can block, so oops a daisy. Did not mean to actually uh, do that there. I actually gave him the card draw. Doesn't really matter too much. So we've got double card draw here from the Smothering Abomination and the uh, Harvester of Souls, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we can force you to sacrifice a creature, just to make this easier. Draw another card. Oh, more, lots of mana here. Interesting. I'm just going to swing with all for lethal. And then that's, uh, that's, that's GG. Awesome. So that's the first two uh, missions of the Oath of the Gatewatch campaign completed. Only going to do two today just because I'm out of time. So, oops a daisy, I completely forgot to read... Um, what was at the end there? So I may uh, go back and uh, add that in, maybe? I don't know. Um... That was really silly of me. I completely didn't mean to actually, I should have read that, basically what it said at the end of uh, Nissa's one. So, uh, whoops, that was a bit silly of me. Uh, I might go back and read that myself, but I'm assuming it's basically just uh, you defeat Nissa, or something like that. Uh, I might just throw up a screen grab of it, it up here in a second while as I'm talking, just to show you what it actually said. Um, so I'll go back and add that in later on. But uh, I'm going to leave the episode here for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. As I said, there will be a deck tech out tomorrow once I've had a chance to play around with some new cards. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.